this video is meant to help you understand the functionality and the, actually the benefit for students of the program called SafeAssign. It's a quote-unquote plagiarism checker, and I say this with quotes because it's not really intended to do that, although it does that. Um, in a way, it is a plagiarism checker for both students as well as faculty. I'm going to show you two examples from a course that I taught recently. I've taken up a student's name, so you can't kind of know who they are, but just to show you some examples of how I as faculty look at it, which is actually probably similar to the way that you should use SafeAssign as to check yourself to make sure you didn't accidentally plagiarize something. Um, the way the software works or the program works, um, there's a similar one called Turnitin.com that some of you might be familiar with and some of you might be familiar with SafeAssign already, so that's great. The way it works, it assigns you an overall score, percentage score, and that percentage score sometimes can actually be pretty high. It can be 40, 50, 60 percent which does not mean that you plagiarize. It just means the software is detecting something that could potentially be plagiarized or is identical to something that either is in the, in the database from the institution, meaning other students work, or from the internet. So I'm going to give you some examples to illustrate it. So let's look at the first example. Um, this comes from a paper on hand hygiene. Um, you see right here, the overall plagiarism score is 40%. And personally, as an instructor, I always check the safe assign on every on my student paper on my student papers. Um, I don't check it on the. Uh, this is the second paper they wrote. They wrote a previous paper which I didn't check it because they didn't submit it as a uh, word document, which is actually why I didn't catch something that I'll we'll see later on. But in any case, um, I always look at every uh, every safe assign account. So when you're submitting your paper and uh, instructors can give you the option, often do, that you can submit it before submitting it to class for a check. I, I definitely would strongly suggest you do that. So here, um, you'll see this plot in different colors, and there are some more highlights in this paper. So if you look right here, I have to cut the screen, uh, screen image off here. Um, different colored, uh, highlighted, you know, it points to the highlights in the text. So this yellow obviously belongs here, this belongs here, and this belongs here. Okay? So, off the bat, I'll see, okay, the stuff that's highlighted in yellow comes from another student's paper. And actually, when I click on it, it comes from the student who submitted this from a previous, from a previous assignment in this class. I didn't check their safe assigned scores, but they, they received them. Um, they also, um, the second one, the blue one, also comes from another student's paper. And often that means if you submit a draft, it comes from your previous draft. In my case, it often does. And then the third one, this is where I get a little nervous. So again, the 40% don't make me nervous. This makes me nervous because it lists here a website. So what I what I would do what I'll do in this case is I click on okay let me click on the actual um, highlighted part right here. So I would click on that with my mouse. I can't do this right now with the screenshot, but this would appear. Actually, I clicked on the first one and this one here first and the yellow one. So it tells me it's another student's paper. So it tells me you see here the sentences are identical. So it compares the uploaded version with the source. Sometimes what I see is that the uploaded version and the source are actually pretty fairly different. And so sometimes SafeAssign just picks some things up. Or it's an expression like this paper argues that. That's this expression that a lot of people use in their writing. So this one here seems to be okay, right? So it's not a big deal. It comes from another student's paper. In this case I know it's from her previous paper. Um, if it comes from another student's paper in the class with a different name, then you're in trouble. But if it's attached to your name, then you're in oh, okay. So here is where I get nervous. And this is the third part right here. This, uh, this green one here that I clicked on. Suspected entry and the source. And it's identical. So what I usually do in a situation like this, I go to the source. This comes from the Centers for Disease Control. Um, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna click on this because I prepared a little hand, a uh, little slide with this. So I go to the next slide. Down here, is the paragraph from the CDC on clean hands. And if you compare this to this paragraph, it is 100% identical. Big trouble. This is definitely plagiarism with a big P. Right? And this can cause students to fail papers, potentially fail classes, potentially be dismissed out of the program if issues of academic dishonesty occur more than once. So you have to take this very seriously. In most cases, 
from my, from my experience, students don't really nearly plagiarize. They often forget to cite something. They didn't think it had to be cited. Or they just simply forgot in the heat of the moment, which is another reason why planning ahead is good. But with this tool, if the student would have run this through the safe assigned check, they would have noticed that this is a direct copy and could have done something about it. And the way, you know, paraphrase everything, put everything in quotation marks, if it's a quick fix and you can't really do too much because it's right before the deadline. It's not ideal, but it's better than keeping it the way it is. Um, but definitely the test does need some work. Otherwise, this is a serious case of plagiarism. Again, it started off not really as, as that big of a deal apart from the connection that there is a, is a match. And if you look at the match right here, it's a 99% match. If these matches are here in the high numbers, that's where I'm always a little concerned, particularly when they come from the source of not a student paper, but a potential website. Let me show you an example where actually it looks like it's an issue of plagiarism just by looking at the numbers, but it actually isn't. So now the paper, um, here the students didn't get too much um, higher than the text, actually nothing as another paragraph here, but the plagiarism score overall is 39% as well. So that's still pretty high. 40% was the previous one with a serious case of plagiarism. This one here, actually I shouldn't call it the plagiarism score. I should show, I should call it the just the safe assigned score. The safe assigned score is 39%. Um, so if I look, take a closer look at the paper though, I get to the references. And this student used the different, uh, didn't use APA style, reference style, different reference style if you notice. You notice all of these highlighted, different highlights. And these are of course highlights from that the that, that safe assigned found um, in either another student paper who used the same source or the same student's paper from a previous draft if they use the same source. Um, they might have found this in another, you know, on the web, um, especially this particular source here. I think on the website somewhere here. Um, they might have pulled it out. So it looks quote unquote like it's plagiarism, but it actually really isn't. So the thirty and the thirty nine percent only came from the references page. In this case, it doesn't matter. The, the overall score, score is really ultimately irrelevant unless you start investigating what the score actually means. I think that's my big message. The score, your safe assigned score, only tells a part of the story. You always have to investigate more. Right? So investigate further what lies behind that score because it, it, it can hide a lot of things. So that's the way you can use safe assigned um, again, you see the different highlights, you can click on those, and that's where you can see, check yourself. If things are marked in text, like in this particular example here, this is where you really need to investigate. This is the draft of yours before you submit it to make sure that you don't end up with something like this, that serious plagiarism, compared to something like this, which, you know, in retrospect ended up being serious plagiarism because the whole paragraph was lifted. Um, again, it's a, it's a way to check yourself and, and not to make yourself vulnerable to those accusations of plagiarism.